With new COVID cases on the decline now in many parts of the country, is it the time to start lifting some COVID restrictions? Our health reporter, Anjali Kamlani, here now with what we should expect. And Anjali, we already see that the governor of New Jersey says he's going to lift those mask mandates for kids in school starting March 7th. It's a pretty controversial move. Right, so we heard that from Governor Phil Murphy today, following in the footsteps um, of Pennsylvania's governor just last month. And we also know that Delaware is making similar moves, as well as, uh, again, across uh, the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. That partnership that has sort of existed um, throughout the pandemic is taking force here. And we see that that's sort of the trend um, that they're looking at when it comes to especially those new cases, hospitalizations generally down across this area, and generally speaking, good vaccination rate. So that all blends in uh, to why the governor is setting that lifting of mask mandates for March 7th. So just a month from now and extending the public health emergency until then. His reasoning also for March was very specific. Here's what he had to say about that. Early March traditionally means the weather starts to warm up at least a bit. And Pat, you'll make sure that that happens, which will give schools a little bit more flexibility to increase ventilation be more creative with that and further decrease the risk of COVID spread. And perhaps most importantly, this is a huge step back to normalcy for our kids. So as you can hear, a lot going on when it comes to looking at that return to schools, return to normal, return to office, and that sort of conversation that we've been hearing about, uh, quite honestly, in the past few weeks. And this seems to be sort of where that is coming from. And specifically on that point about ventilation, that is key to this, because we know that that is sort of why we see these winter surges as more people are indoors. Poorer ventilation allows for an airborne virus to then circulate a lot faster. Back to you. Okay, and then New York as well, looking to reduce their mask mandate coming up in several weeks or months as well. Andre, I want to ask you just really quickly, where are we as far as cases and hospitalizations? Are we turning a corner? I know deaths just hit 900,000. Well, we are seeing that, right? All the numbers seem to be pointing in the right direction. And a lot of experts, including, you know, the governor earlier pointing to that as sort of a cautionary optimism there with cases down, hospitalizations coming down in some parts of the country. There are still some hospitals uh, that while ICUs are freeing up, hospital admissions aren't necessarily letting up. And we continue to see a pretty high daily death rate. So about 2,600 on average per day. That's still pretty high, um, even though it is not, you know, the high highest that we've ever seen. Uh, and so that has really kept people concerned, especially also, as we know, there's that subvariant sort of lurking in the background. So maybe within the next month or so, we'll see, you know, previous estimates were that we would peak uh, mid-February with the current variant. As it stands right now, definitely looking to see the tail end of this surge. Uh, but of course, the rest of 2022 is still awake. And I, I'm just wondering if, with everybody having such COVID fatigue, what the numbers are now on vaccinations, but also on booster shots, because we know that uh, in many parts of the country, even people who were fully vaccinated with two doses had not yet gone for that third dose. That's still lagging, and that is sort of where some of the concern comes from, not just here in the U.S. with boosters, but also globally, of course, still not getting to those first doses. It all is part of the same story when you look at the outlook for the variant, for the virus, sorry, here in the U.S. and its, uh, you know, future impact. And this also plays a role, uh, quite honestly, in what we're looking at for kids. And that's sort of where the controversy comes from also for the school debate, which is we see that there is a small number of kids uh, vaccinated already for those that are eligible. And we're still looking to bring on board, of course, that under five, uh, that meeting next week with the FDA to kind of set the tone for whether or not under five-year-old will be uh, eligible. So all of this put together is really the part that's straining. So while we have seen, you know, slow gains, it seems like generally speaking, the U.S. has sort of plateaued on these numbers and that is playing a role in, in, in moving forward. All right, Anjali Kemlani, thanks so much for wrapping that up for us.